Hi everybody, Dan Oman along with Matt Bernier. The DRF Bets race of the day for Friday, September the 7th. Race number 8 at Belmont Park. It's opening day of the fall championship meeting. You can bet the race, you can bet the card, you can bet the meet with DRF Bets. Sign up, get a 300% deposit match. Deposit 50, bet with 200. Bets. .drf.com is where you need to go. Here's the field for the Christie Cat Stakes. We're going six furlongs on the inner turf for 100 grand. You can download free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Handicap along with us as we take the field in, in post position order. Matt, the number one closer still, one of several horses in this race coming out of the Coronation Cup at Saratoga on July the 30th. And this filly just had a terrible trip. It was just sort of reminiscent to the meat market. Cassie had. Yeah, seriously, I, I think you're just supposed to draw a line through that Coronation Cup for her going into the far turn, check badly. Really, I don't think anybody would have faulted her for running last at that point. Instead, she comes out with a little bit of a belated run on the far outside, and I guess really with that Coronation Cup, you need to make a little bit of a call because there were a number of horses across the wire, and if you're going to take anybody out of it outside of the winner and perhaps the third place finisher, Lady Subi, I think you want to try to be a little bit more charitable to a horse like Closer Still, who she didn't have any sort of luck in that race. 12 to 1 on Closer Still switches to the expert turf rider, Junior Alvarado, and this filly's got a little bit of underrated speed. If she breaks, she could put herself in a really strong position. And I like her better at six than five and a half. Expect a better performance from the one closer still. The two, Ms. Mayhem, all she's done is won her last five starts sprinting on the turf. She's now with trainer Jason Service, who's not only known as being a guru with turf sprinters, but he basically wins with everything right about now. This source has good tactical speed. Timeform US has her among the early leaders. Red bar indicates the pace should be fast. I mean, really, doesn't this boil down to can she handle the, the class hike? Because from a speed figure standpoint, she makes all the sense in the world. The distance, I don't think, is going to be an issue for her. And it sounds like you can read the race advance over at DRF.com. It doesn't sound like the connections are that concerned about the distance as well. Um, I, I just am curious to see what she's going to do against better horses. Broadway Run, the number three, won the Coronation Cup, beat five of these common rivals that day. Might be a different pace scenario, though, than the Coronation Cup. If you recall, that day she broke from the far outside post, and before a quarter of a mile was completed, she had actually cleared off to make the lead and the inside, and she kept right on going. Here she might have to work a little bit harder. Yeah, that's true, but you know what? I think the thing that's supposed to allay any sort of fears, that run two starts back where she sat off the pace, she came with a run. I understand she didn't quite get up in time, but that at least gives you hope or reason to believe that, you know what, she's not dependent on being forwardly placed. And like you say, with that red bar, I don't think she is going to be that close to the pace. Tesora would really benefit from that red bar. She's the number four. She's absolutely last on our time form U.S. pace projector. She came with a little bit of a run last time out in the Coronation Cup. She was taking a gigantic cutback in distance from eight and a half to five and a half and she just got outrun early better pace situation here this is a very lightly raced filly going out for a very good trainer yeah not out of the realm of possibility that she takes a step forward here you brought up the pace situation most recently in that coronation cup time form us has one of those splits color coded blue meaning it was going against horses coming from off of it possibly favoring those forwardly placed horses if she gets a pace scenario like the pace projector has suggested then she's interesting Matt, I know you're a little bit of a fan of the number five, Kittens Cover Girl, and why not? This horse was claimed for $40,000, and all she's done since then is win two races, including one with an 87 buyer over two next out winners in her most recent start. Also, the fourth place finisher of that last race came back to earn an 87 buyer in her next race when she finished second. Now, Kittens Cover Girl's been away about two months, and she's cutting all the way back in distance. Where do you think she'll be early? Where does she fit from a class standpoint? You know, I think this slight turn back in distance, that's going to make her be a little bit farther back, I would imagine. I don't think she's going to quite be up there pushing the pace like she was going her out of ground. And it's a little, I was a little bit disappointed. I would have liked to have seen her in that stakes race up at Saratoga because going longer, I think she had the ability to be a little bit more forwardly placed. Instead, now you're probably going to be coming from mid-pack, and I'm not totally convinced that that's the best situation for her. I think the number six factor of one has an outside chance for Christophe Clement and Joel Rosario. Two starts back, beaten by Ms. Mayhem, but she was doing a lot of the dirty work on the lead while Ms. Mayhem sat just off the pace. And then last time out in the Coronation Cup, she was just one of those horses where the trip didn't exactly work out. A fast pace could work to her benefit, and I like her stretching out a half a furlong. 
Agreed. You know, I think this is probably a better situation for better setup as well from that pace projector. I, I guess the only thing that I'm a little bit unsure of, we're going through 10 starts now. And these past five, she's just sort of plateaued in that mid to high 70 range. Uh, and I'm not holding the Coronation Cup against her. I'm not totally convinced that you're going to get a giant forward move here. And I think you're probably going to need something in the mid 80 range if you're going to be a, a threat. Super striking the number seven is a stakes winner going two turns on very soft turf. I still think the trainer Michael Trombetta is trying to figure out what kind of filly she is. Is she a turf router? Is she a synthetic horse? Is she a turf sprinter? Last time out, they ran her on the synth for the first time. And she ran okay, although that race hasn't come back very strong just yet. No, it hasn't. But to be fair, I think you have excuses for why that race has not come back particularly good. Win the war. She ended up running poorly on dirt. She's clearly not a dirt horse in the fourth place finisher. Was four and a half lengths behind the body of the field there in that Duchess. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I've always been a fan of this horse. I think she has a little bit of ability. I kind of agree with you and your assessment of what Trombetta may or may not know with her. I, I, I don't really know what she wants. I don't know if she's going to be best shorter going six furlongs, seven furlongs on the grass, or if kind of the day that I really fell in love with her was that run back in February at Gulfstream at a mile and a 16th. I wonder if ultimately she is going to be more of a router. Lady Subi is the number eight going out for trainer Chad Brown. Course and distance winner three starts back. We're getting a very nice pocket trip, easing out three wide and then running down Conquest Tis Fire in the shadow of the wire. Last time out in the Coronation Cup, hustled early to chase three wide, never really got any cover. It was an even performance, but here's a Chad formulator fact. Third off the layoff in turf sprints with three-year-olds over the past four years. He's four for nine with over a $5 return on investment. This horse has enough tactical speed to work out an outside tracking trip. And again, she wouldn't be a surprise. And if you could get four to one or nine to two, I think that's fair. She's six to one on the line. And it's hard to ignore the fact that her two best races to date have been sprints on turf. The run two starts back. I understand it was a mile and at Belmont, that's sort of a one-ish turn kind of situation. But her two best races very clearly have been going shorter on the grass. That's what she gets to do here again on Friday. If you read the DRF advance for this race, David Granning reports that the Nine Street Lady is expected to scratch. She's going to have some throat surgery. So we'll move on to the 10, Momenu, who is the beaten favorite in the Coronation Cup. I thought all in all, Momenu had a decent trip that day. She just didn't fire her best shot. I wonder if she just didn't like the wet course at Saratoga. That Saratoga turf course played weirdly on many, many occasions. Yeah, it certainly did. And like you say, you're going to have to be sort of wary or cognizant of that going forward with horses coming out of those races. Um, I think it's important that she gets back to Belmont Park. She's never been out of the exact and two lifetime starts. I happen to think her best game is when she's sent and she is more forward as opposed to sitting. And I know she has won from off the pace slightly, but I think she's at her best when she's forward. I don't think she's up there contesting the pace, but I think from that outside draw, I think she sits that perfect sort of stalking trip. Let's take a look at our top picks for Friday's DRF bets race of the day. The Christie Cat Stakes. You're going with closer still. You're getting 12 to 1 on the morning line. I think you can settle into a nice pocket spot. The, uh, you know what? I agree with you. You brought up the fact that she has a little bit more early speed than maybe the page would initially suggest. I think she can get a little bit closer. I like that run in the Ginger Brew going all the way back to earlier this year down at Gulfstream. I think she has the ability. And that most recent run, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the Coronation Cup. She had every right to pack it in after that, and she came with a little bit of a bid. I, I think she's sitting on a better effort. Whether she's good enough or not to win, we'll find out. But I, I think she's interesting. Give me numbers. One, three, seven, five. I'm going to go with Broadway Run in here. She's seven to two, second choice on the morning line behind Ms. Mayhem. Matt mentioned two starts back that she showed the ability to sit from off the pace and come with a good run and pass a couple of horses in the stretch. She might have to do that. I still think she is getting better and better as a lightly raced three-year-old. This is only her fourth lifetime start. I'm hoping that she stays close to that seven to two, three to one on the morning line. I'll go three, five, eight in the Christie Cat. This is the DRF Bets Friday race of the day and check out this new offer. A 300% deposit match is yours when you sign up for a DRF Bets account at Bets dot drf dot com. Approximate post time for the Christie Cat on opening day of the fall championship meet at beautiful Belmont Park, 518 Eastern. Good luck.